Okay, so the other thing I have is they focus on the bottom 15%. It's all about the bottom 15%. It's all about if you have a 15% probability of running out of money. That's kind of pessimistic. There, there are a few websites that talk about the top 10%, the top quarter, the top half, the most likely, the 95% scenario, but they're few and far between. What they, what, when they set up this 4 to 5%, they focus on the bad scenarios. Okay? There's an article, one of the articles I gave you to read. Um, I think the number was 95% of the time you ended up with as much money as you started. Yeah, they know that. They're trying to put the fear of God in you. What are they trying to do? They're trying to say, man, if you don't give me your money to manage, you're going to run out of money. you got to know what you're doing here. You can only withdraw 4 or 5% and you better, you better watch your earnings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they got an axe to grind. Let's face it. They're not going to tell you. 95% of the chance of the time, you're going to have at least as much money as you started. But they're not going to tell you that. And they're charging you 1 or 2% here. Yes. So they're getting 40% of, of, of what you're getting. That's it's under management. 1% of the In retirement. So um, the other thing that blows my mind is that they really count, if you run out in 29 years and 11 months, does it go in the bad column? <laughs> Some of these actually do. And, it, and it's hard. You, you read. You read. You try to get to the 12th layer of the onion on what they're doing. And, and you can't. They, they don't. They don't tell you all the information you need. Okay? Uh, we talked about inflation, the 3%, the particularly if you own a house, is not going to apply to you. And if you own rental property, it applies to you very, very partially. We'll, we'll get there. Um, so they overstate inflation, uh, particularly if you live in it, if you've got a lot of discretionary income, if you've got your own house, if you've got real estate. Uh, they give you no credit for monitoring this and being able to change your situation. The computer doesn't care. The computer's going to go run this model like they did with Benjamin. Benjamin, the guy, ran out of money in 14 years. And we're going to see that study. I don't know how we're doing time-wise, but I'm going to show you that study. And, and you can see that the guy had plenty of warning. The guy had plenty. By definition, if you're going to run out of money, how much are you going to withdraw the last year? 100%, right? What did you start with? Four to five. This doesn't happen. You wake up one morning and you're out of money. You want your withdrawal rate go up and up and up and up and up. And you compare it to the four to five percent guideline. You compare it to the R&D. You see where you are and you react to it. Computer doesn't do that. Right? Should be another change. Um, they use the low stock allocation, what I think is, is low, 110 minus your age. I use 75% stocks. I am completely 100% covered as far as I'm concerned, and you're going to see why before you go. Okay, outside investments, kind of not included. Let's 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 go up here for that. Let's say you need $50,000 a year to live off, right? Total. Let's say you get $20,000 from Social Security. Let's say you get ten thousand from a pension. Let's say you have an annuity that pays you four. I don't know. I'm just pumping out numbers here. So what's that? That's thirty-four. Let's say you have sixteen thousand left. Social Security, pensions, annuities. Let's say that's all from your rental income. No, let's not say that. Let's say your rental income. Let's be realistic. You have five properties that are thrown off two hundred dollars a month. So let's say 10,000 rental income. And so your withdrawal should be, to make up the difference, should be 20, 30, 34, 44, 6,000. So when they say you're withdrawing 6,000, right? You get all your other buckets, you're withdrawing 6,000. So in a way, they've included your, you have included your rental income, right? But what have you not included? We, we talked about this, all my numbers that I love. Did we talk about loan amortization? Did we talk about appreciation? Did we talk about you can sell that rental property and get a big bucket of money down the road? No, we did not. <laughs> but we did include some rental income if you, did your, if you did your pillars right. We did include your rental income. Rental income is variable. Um, Social Security is not, pensions is not, annuities is not. The withdrawal is variable. Okay. So, for real estate investors in particular, this 4 to 5% withdrawal is not only over 
cautious for all the other reasons we talked about, but it's also over cautious because you have a real estate pillar. When we talk about the real estate pillar, we're going to really get into this, how to use your real estate pillar to replenish your bucket.